I mean, I, I think there's the whole like Varan legacy thing that, you know, we can discuss, but I don't know if we have time to dive in too deep into how, like, you know, where he ranks and like how great he was. I think this is, this podcast is going to be a lot of big picture stuff. Um, I, I, I think the club and that one thing we haven't discussed yet, which I think is really important um, to put it through the club's lens, be it right or wrong, is that that phase this season where we saw the team play not only without Ramos, it wasn't just that Ramos wasn't there. It was also Varan wasn't there. I think that opened the club's eyes um, into a possible window that like, okay, there are certain players who are expendable, other players who we could potentially cash in on um, and not have a huge drop off if we cash in on them. And Baran may have been one of them in that during that run to them. I'm not, and I, again, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. And I don't think we're, we're ones here to look at small sample sizes and extend that and be like, okay, well, Nacho and Militao are now by default our best center back pairing. I think we all thought, we all knew that those two were still our best center backs, Ramos and Baran. But I think the club looked at that and was like, okay, if this helps us get us closer to our goal and our goal in this sense being getting back the superstars that put us on a global map as a feared European contender every year, then this is what gets us closer to that goal. Um, and, I, and I do want to, like, Kunde, by the way, if Sevilla won 80 million, I don't think he's worth 80 million. I really like Kunde. I think he's I, not, he's, he's I've not seen, worth 80 million. I've seen enough from Kunde to know he has a lot of kinks that he needs to work on and improve on. Um, 80 million, no. And, and obviously, like, the club is not going to, in this situation, go 80 million balls to the walls to sign somebody like Kunde. They're just going to ride out what they have. Um, and, Om, you mentioned earlier in the podcast, like, does this actually get us closer to the Mbappe goal? Um, it, I mean, it kind of, kind of does. Like, I, I don't, I'm, I don't know if, if we were going to be able to sign him this summer. You're going to need some numbers like this to add up. And um, Mark had reported today that you know, with the Varan transfer, that brings you to 180 million um, that you could spend this summer that Real Madrid have allocated towards a, an Mbappe signing. So um, if we had 180 million, we could easily pay Varan's salary. No problem. Like that, that doesn't even become a financial question. Anyway, that, I, I mean, but, I don't but know. But that's, that's why, reaction. oh, by the way, that's why I don't think salary was the actual issue here. I don't, I think in some ways where we might be discussing the wrong things when we're talking about salary, because I don't think that was ultimately what the deciding factor was. I think we all knew the contracts that are coming off the books in 2022. Marcelo, Isco, uh, there's another one. Bale. Who? Bale. Bale. Yeah, Bale. Bale. The biggest um, one. <laughs> so, I mean, Bale in itself would uh, would clear. Well, like- and that's that's the thing. I don't, I just, I think it's very difficult for Mbappe to come with Bale and Hazard still at the club because their contracts are so big and they take up, and, and the club, uh, Marcotti made a great point in one of his articles recently that, like, the thing with COVID and the thing with this cash crunch right now for all clubs is they can't budget for it. Like it's one thing if you can budget for it, but there's so much uncertainty that you don't know what's going to happen. Like, yeah, maybe fans come back in, in September, but then they're gone again in January. And I mean, we, we see what's happening with COVID when we thought we defeated. Yeah, it and exactly. We, we don't even now. know if, if, if fans are, and journalists are going to be back in the stadium next summer. Yeah. Next so season. that, so, so how can clubs plan and forecast for that? Like, it's one thing if you can budget for it and you know how, what your cash flow is going to be and, and so on and so forth. But if you can't budget for it, then it's you're taking a hit, but you don't know how big the hit's going to be. And so then if you spend all this money on Mbappe and you just drove yourself into financial ruin because you have Hazard, and Mbappe, and Bale all on these huge salaries, then it's going to be really difficult. I think if one of the two go, then it's more it's possible. Um, if both go, then it's definitely possible. But uh, if if they both stay, I think it's really difficult. By the way, I this is why I don't think it's over yet. It's not going to be over. They they're going to try to get off more salaries. What's the yep. reason for retaining Isco beyond this summer? There's no. You can't give me one good reason. There's zero. Like it. He I has mean, one year we, left on his. We... If if Varan needs to be cashing on, and you don't want to hold him, <laughs> what the heck is Isco in this situation? Why? What's the point of the fact that no one wants him would probably be. Only <laughs> yeah. But they can but, just I mean, drive if... his. They they they'd rather probably drive his price down at this point to whatever they can get for him. I don't. He's not going to stay beyond next. Word... I mean, I think Madrid would take ten million for Isco at this point. Yeah, I mean, if we're and I actually think he, there's still a decent player left in him. It's just that you can't prove it. 
right? Like in, in the last couple of seasons, like you can't say, oh, this is who he's going to be. That's not going to fly. That, look, if we're going to do this, and this is really about going all in on Mbappe and making the big bet, you can't stop now, right? You just got rid of Baran. Now go ahead and do it. I mean, the issue would come to me is when we start being like Odegaard, right? You know, Fede, like I'm not that Fede's name has been there, but I don't see why Fede would be, you know, less, less expendable than Odegaard, right? Like that comes into a whole different discussion, which we can't get to. And I, I've already talked about, about like how you actually build a winning squad and this idea that Mbappe can do everything for us without the proper pieces behind him. Yeah. We've seen the greatest player of all time, maybe the second greatest player of all time in Lionel Messi, not be able to, to win things you know and in my opinion easily the greatest floor raiser of all time um so like that would be his situation where every everything has to rely on him that strengthens everything about him i mean barca come nowhere close to competing with front lines that that have individual players that are nowhere near as good as messi and i think mbappe is very good probably the best player in the world right now i mean he'll, he'll never be as good as messi at least in his peak so i i Different discussion. We're not there yet in terms of that, but it would come if we start being like Odegaard, Jovic, like, all right, who is Mbappe going to play with exactly to, to, to help us win things? And I, I like, I, I think Mbappe is a good floor raiser, but I think his strongest position is is definitely where he has those creators and progressors behind him. And he's allowed to do his thing going off the shoulder. All good points. I, I you know, I probably a discussion for another time. You're right. Mbappe with PSG, has yet to win a Champions League trophy, although although he's come close. I this squad still needs some retooling around him, obviously. And um, you know, there, it's not to say that they, that can't be done. You you know, you can definitely retool it around him. It's 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 doable, but it does need some work. I do think that we are underrating one aspect of this. Again, is like you have you see this in the NBA all the time. Mom. You just can't hold on to assets that are expiring at the end of the year if you're going. If they're if they're profiles that you need to get value for before they leave for free, like this happens all the time. Um, unless it's a salary you just really want to get rid of after at the end of the season, Varan was not one of those. You just have to deal him. And I think this is kind of what happened here. This is this is the situation they were in. They had no guarantee Varan would resign or they'd be able to convince him to stay. Um, and I, I think it was just a little bit too risky for them to try to play that game. <laughs> 